and welcome back to Keep On Creating. I'm Mike, let's do this. So welcome back to Keep On Creating. So if you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button, smash the like button, because it really helps the channel out and shows those YouTube overlords what's what, and it does really help the channel, and we'll see where it goes from there. So today we're jumping back into Affinity Designer, where we're going to be doing something pretty effective and really, 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 really simple. Like, really simple. It's, it's really simple. Taking some text, punching through some elements, making a black and white version, making a color version, Let's do this. Sign up to Affinity Design across the file, click on that, click on new, and up pops our new document window. You can see all the settings I've got here 500, 500, don't worry about the DPI, and click create. So here is our artboard. So what we're going to do today is simply we are going to start off with our text. So we're going to hit T to get our text all up, and let's start writing in some text. So we're going to write in what should we use today? Uh, do, do not fade. And we're going to keep that in capitals this time. So what font should we use for this one? I think we need like a, a good thick round type of font. So century would be good. Let's have a look. Does that do a nice thick version? Because we look want it to be really, really thick. Okay, that's not too bad. But I think I, I'm just going to put it up here. And make another copy with that by just holding Alt and Shift and dragging that down. I think we need a thicker font than this one. So this is going to be, uh, where is it? Charnay, I think it's called. It's Charnay, Charnay Black. So I'm going to be using this Charnay Black. It's really nice, thick, thick font. As you can see, it's slightly thicker than the Century Gothic version that I chose there. So let's just separate this out a little bit here because we're going to stylize this. So I'm going to take, do not, I'm going to take that. I'm going to cut that out. So Command X, take it out. Just click somewhere on your artboard. Command V to paste it. I'm going to make this fade a lot bigger. So just drag in those blue little corners. Okay, really easy stuff to do. Just make do not. Let's put it right here. And actually, right, let's take it to about there. Okay, just snap it there, make it up. So you can see what I'm trying to do is I'm just aligning it nicely to the side. We can come and configure that a little bit later. Holding Alt and Shift, clicking and dragging that down. Just right down here, our strap line. Keep on creating. Spot that right. Yep. And then drag this in. I'm going to drag it into there. I'm also going to make this one at the bottom a little bit thinner. So just create some difference to it. And I think the Charnay does a, yeah, we're just an extra ball. So it makes it a little bit different. A little bit different. Okay. So there we've got our basic text. I'm just going to select everything there. And I'm going to go up here and click on this align left. Now we could just convert this to curves right now, but I'm not going to. I'm going to leave that just in case you want to change or add anything later. Hmm. Sometimes I'd like to change it, sometimes I don't. I'm just going to knock that down a little bit there. Okay, so to make this instantly more dynamic, I've just dragged a marquee, a selection of all those elements there. So I've got do not fade, keep on creating, all selected. I'm going to hover over this little section here. It gives me those two little up and down arrows you know, up and down, and I'm just going to simply drag it up, and you can see what a difference that makes already. I mean, bam. Okay, that's probably a little bit too much. Let's, let's rein ourselves in a little bit. Just bring it back a little bit there. Okay, yeah. Control yourself, my control. Okay, so now that we've got that, I am going to start breaking this up a little bit. So let's get our triangle tool. So I've got a little triangle over here. I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to just draw a triangle here somewhere. Okay, I'm going to make it quite stubby so we get it quite thick. I don't want it too pointy so it goes all the way up and creates it too much of a point. I want it to be able to really divide the text up. So I'm going to make it somewhere around about there, quite quite stubby. And let's create a black fill. So over here is current, currently white. So I'm just going to knock that out, just flip it over, take off that stroke. So you can see I've just clicked this little button over here or that little icon and taken away that stroke. Okay, now that we've got our text and our triangle here, let's just get our numbers right so we're all on the same page. So I'm just gonna select again all this text over here. I'm gonna head over here to my transform palette and you can see currently mine is on 9.1. Let's change this to 12.5 by minus 12.5, okay? And it almost ends up to where we were in the beginning. Now uh, with this one here, I'm going to rotate this all the way around. So you see I'm selecting it and it gives me those little rotate little icon ruler things or arrow things, should, should I say. I am going to click it and I'm going to go all the way around to about there. So 180. Then I'm going to actually rotate this slightly back a bit 
to what is it saying? It's a 150 mile rotation angle. So my rotation angle on this one you can see is 150. Okay, now what we're gonna have to do is I am going to take this, I wonder if we should separate that. So let's just concentrate on this fade bit, make this nice and easy. So here's my triangle over here. I am gonna make this triangle a white color. So go over to my swatches, select my fill, which is this solid little circle over here and click on the white icon. Now I did make, did make sure that this triangle of mine was actually sitting on top of the word fade. And so it looks like it's currently punching through it. Obviously it's still a triangle, but anyway. So let's just break up our text a little bit. So you can see the D is done. I'm gonna hold Alt, click and drag, just put it through the E or section of the E. So I'm gonna actually drag a little bit here. I'm gonna drag a little bit over there. So you can see why I've made that a shorter, stubbier triangle rather than a long one. So you can get that defined cut out of the letter you're looking for, what I'm looking for. And let's just go put pop on here and we'll pop on here. It doesn't matter if we overlap the top text because we can always put that top, top text on top of the triangle, top, 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 top. And let's just cut a piece. I'm gonna cut a piece out of here. We can come sort that out in a bit. Now, let's completely rotate our triangle around. So select this one, I'm gonna click it, just drag it over here, holding Alt, and just get your little corner over there with your arrows, hold Shift, go completely the other way. So you can see that's now minus 30, so that's minus 30 degrees. And let's cut from the bottom up. So let's do another cut over here. We could do another cut over here in the E. That looks cool. Uh, in the A and in the F, we'll do just cut out this corner over here. Okay. And uh, whoops, we've left the A behind over there. I didn't hold down Alt before clicking. Before clicking. Okay. So that looks good. That's good. Okay. So now what we need to do is I need to basically go and let's just tidy up this one here. I can draw with my pen tool or I can just draw a square over this. Whichever is easier for you. If you want to draw, get your rectangle tool over here, just draw a block around this. Select both of those items. So I've selected my rectangle and my triangle and I'm just going to click this little minus button over here, the subtract, and you can see it's now gone away from there. So now I'm going to select this piece at the bottom over here. So the one point, the triangle pointing up. I'm going to hold Alt, click and drag, and I'm going to drag it up to somewhere around here. And let's go back to our swatches and make this black. Okay, so there it is, black. And I'm just going to tuck it just over there. Okay, that's cool. And if we wanted to, we could put another one like peeking out over here. And I so do all the ones that you want to point upwards. And let's put one just on the inside of that, like so. Just making sure it's not going to get cut out. There. And put another one here, put another one up here. That'll look a bit weird. And we could put another one peeking out just over here, which we can come sort of the same way we did with the others. Okay, how's that looking? That's looking pretty good. And then we obviously want the ones pointing down. So all we do is select a white one pointing down, click and drag, make that black. So make the full black color. So just select your back and just peek it down. Okay, we can come sort all these little niggles out if we wanted to later. And let's get another one over here. And another one. Just make it coming out of, let's make it coming somewhere under here. That looks cool. That's good. This is good. Okay, so let's go and sort all these little bits out. So we can, again, we can just use the pen tool or we can do the rectangle tool. For now, I'm going to use the pen tool, the other option. So I'm going to hit P to get a pen tool up, which is this tool right here. And I'm going to just start clicking around the area where I do not want my triangle peeking out. And I'm just going to start subtracting them off. Okay, so that's what I want there. Uh, I'm going to leave that for now. That's all good. That's all good. Have I got everything? Yeah. Right. So now with all the white ones, okay, I'm going to select this white one, this white one, this white one, that white one, that white one, that one, that one, that one, that one, and that one. Not the black one, that one. Okay. And I'm just going to go up here and click on this add function. So I'm going to add them all together select my text okay because that is still currently text remember that's not a graphic so with your text selected over here i'm going to go command enter you can see it turns it into a group i'm going to ungroup that so command shift g okay you can see it's all the curves then i'm going to add all of them together Pew! and with our curves over here so these are our curves over here select that one hold command select our fade text curves over here and let's just subtract all of them and now 
you can see it's actually punched through all those bits there. So you can see when I'm hovering these little sections here, you can see the D kind of peeking through and all that. So I'm going to put that back in place. Okay, now I want to take these little areas over here. Okay, let's take all these triangles, right? There, I've selected all my triangles there. I'm going to go Command Enter to convert them all to curves. Okay, they're all curves. Now, the ones where they're intersecting our Ds and everything over here, obviously you don't want it peeking out funny like that. I'm just gonna bring it and I'm going to make sure my snapping is turned on. Okay, drag it away, drag it in, drag it away, drag it in. Then we're not gonna get a funny little overlap. That one's fun. And did we want something? What happened here? What happened here? I think that was meant to be a black one going up. So to quickly correct that, just get our node tool. I'm gonna to select this node, this node, and possibly this node, we can even select that node. I'm just gonna delete them, create that line again, quickly get a black one from here, just click and drag it in. Ooh, there's the white one there. Okay, so the white was the meant. We missed that white one when we were wanting to punch it through. So select the white one, select the F, and just punch that through. Okay, that's what we were meant to do. And then we, this was meant to go over here somewhere like that i suppose i think we had it okay i'm just going to take the bottom of that off just draw the pen tool click, 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 and just have them both selected and just subtract it there we go and then we're gonna just get that corner of this one and just pop it right there and then the last one is just this little one over here that i can see so just get my node tool and i'm just going to snap it right to there that's cool just that little piece sticking out that's right, let's pop it. I'm gonna pop it to the inside of that one. Yeah, okay. So making sure that our fade text over here is right to the top. Let's just label this F-A-T-E so we know that that is the text there. We could actually go ahead and add some color. So if you wanted a black and white, there's a black and white option. If you wanted to add the same process to the do not put at the top over there, you can obviously do that. I'm actually just gonna select this text over here, make it a little bit bigger. Okay, I just wanted to kind of just I'm gonna take that snapping off. I oh, want to take it tall, just so it just is in line with the bottom of that E. This one here, just bring that in a little bit. I'm just looking for this D to be in line with that T. Okay, all about lining things up to make things look good. And just give us a little bit more space in between here and here. Good, good. Okay, so let's just move a copy of this up. We don't need that one anymore, so delete that. Gonna move all these up. Hold with everything selected there. I'm gonna hold down Alt and Shift and click and drag and drag that down. Okay, okay. So let's add some color in this. Let's make these bits here. Okay, all the text bits. Let's make them white so we can actually see them when we put a dark block behind it. And with the fill selected over here, I am going to click on white. Okay, I'm gonna get all these little pieces here. Okay, all the black bits just go in there. Just select all of them. Uh, these are all hidden behind our text. You can see that one there. It's the one we did on the inside. Just gotta watch that one. Now I can't select that one. Just go right in. Select that one, that one. This one's being a pain. Okay, so I've got all my triangles selected. Let's just make them into, bring up the colors palette and make these, we'll make them orange. Yep. Okay, back to the layers palette. Hit M to get your rectangle tool up, which is this one here. Draw a big rectangle behind this and let's make that rectangle nice and dark. Okay, so make that black. Go to the layers and take your rectangle, put it all the way to the bottom, right down to the bottom, and then that pops it out there. Now, we can just add a little bit more color into this if we wanted to, so I can select this one. Obviously, you can go and add some more of these lines if you wanted to. Maybe not that one, let's select this one possibly this one and change these colors here back to your swatches and let's make them a yellow so that it pops out yeah that's it good okay uh, I'm going to select an orange color here and I'm going to pop another piece popping out over here okay and this bit here I'm going to select that little node over there I went the wrong way and switch your snapping back on snap it to that point there so we don't get that little orange drag going up there we want everything to be nice and precise and in register and that is just simple you can add more color if you want but that's cool done and how easy was that we took some text we put in some elements made it the black and white version threw in some color and we ended up with something pretty cool really
it easy. Be on your way to be an affinity designer, graphic designer. Thanks for watching this all the way to the end. Remember to hit that subscribe button, smash the like button, and I shall catch you on the next one. I'm out of here.